I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but I went ahead and uh, tied my first piece off, drilled my hole, tied it off, then I measured up an inch and right at the uh, right at the strut, drill a couple holes, I'll drill one in the front, and then I just drill one in the back. Once those holes are complete, just take a full street thread and uh, run them through the holes. I like to go around twice. If your holes are big enough, it should be able to accommodate the size thread. Uh, you definitely want to use upholstery thread or some type of heavy duty nylon thread. Uh, also, dental floss works really good. Uh, you just don't want to use regular household thread that's just not strong enough. It won't, uh, it, it won't be able to withstand uh, the kind of punishment that the landing gear will give it. So. Um, once you've uh, ran your thread around through the holes twice, then I just use a simple square knot, right over left, left over right. Pull it down, pull it very tight. Once you get your uh, threads tied, use your uh, Instacure uh, CA glue. This is super thin, and it takes just a tiny dab on the insides of the thread. And you don't need much more because you don't want it running all over the plane. And what this does is this will literally lock the threads in place. They will never come undone. The only way you'll get, get these threads off now is you'll have to come back in and you'll have to cut them. So you want to sit, let that cure up for a couple minutes and then come back and trim off your, uh, your excess. And that's done. Now if you plan on leaving it white, you can come in with a little bit of uh, latex paint, ho hobby paint, touch those up white. I leave mine the way it is. Um, the last plane we did, which was, um, I did it in uh, cub yellow the whole plane, where I went ahead and painted the wheel skirts and left it black, and it looks like steps. It looks like, uh, if you look at a real wheel skirt, there's a, uh, there's a step there that they use to step up into the plane, so uh, once it's in the air, you'll never see it. So I went ahead and got the cowl painted and mounted straight forward three screws slides right on and I went ahead and painted the uh, vertical tail fin and we got that mounted you'll probably need to spend a couple minutes uh, fitting the uh, wheel through the slot in here and making sure that this doesn't bind up because it's uh, usually bent uh, out of shape and uh, next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, mount the, uh, the clevis pins to the uh, horns and we'll uh, make sure that uh, you turn your radio on and that your servo arms inside the fuselage are centered and that there's uh, no inputs on the uh, transmitter so they're centered and then go in and put your vertical and horizontal uh, surfaces in the neutral position and what I like to do for the first time I fly is I put everything in neutral position and then on the radio I'll adjust uh, the uh, surfaces with the um, with the little buttons that are on the radio with these right here I'll adjust them up down left right and I'll fly the plane bring it back down and then I'll adjust the clevises to the setting. So I'll bring these back to neutral and readjust these into the settings that I had put it in here. Then I'll take it up, fly it again and do the same thing until I get it to where it'll fly level and straight at half throttle or at cruising speed. And, uh, and the radio when it's on, uh, when you're flying all the markings should be in the center and uh, you just use your clevis pins to uh, adjust all that. Uh, next, I, we're almost done. This plane's about ready to, to maiden. Um, I went ahead and pushed the buttons 
that hold the uh, struts, the wing struts. I went ahead and put those in. And these, uh, before I covered the plane, I put little marks where the holes were, pushed them through, and then when you push the buttons on, you'll have to push extra hard to get these down because uh, you're taking the thickness of the film, plus it's much stiffer now uh, to get those in. So don't be afraid to push fairly hard to get them in. You'll actually indent the foam a little bit. That's good. You want these very tight. You don't want them sloppy or moving around because the more they move around, the looser they'll become. It'll more it'll oval out the uh, foam. So push those in nice and hard. And uh, we're about ready to uh, take this out and fly it. Uh, the only thing I have left to do now is uh, we're going to put on the decals and. Um, I'll uh, adjust the uh, surface areas of the ailerons to make sure that they're moving in uh, equal uh, movements in off opposite directions and uh, I'll show you how I do that and then uh, we're going to take this thing out and fly it. Now's a good time uh, to check to make sure all your control surfaces are moving freely. So I went ahead and uh, hooked up the battery and turned it on and let's check the that is working good elevator and you can see we also have movement on the ailerons and we'll be using flaperons for this as well we'll test these flaperons Those seem to work very well. So everything seems to be working properly. And uh, we'll go on to the next step here.